radiant tube heater or forced air unit heater. You want to heat your shop? I'm going to explain the proper way to do it. Hi, I'm Mike from Lark Labs, and I'm going to explain to you the difference between a radiant tube heater and a unit heater in a heating your garage or shop application. So the whole premise, I guess, is depending on what climate you live in, if you have winters like we do here in Canada, um, you want to make sure that we're heating the shop or garage properly and well enough that we don't end up with uh, excess water or ice and salt damage to our garage floors uh, and stuff like that in the winter time. So in our instances, a radiant tube heater is the better option. Um, and this is why. So if you have a unit heater or a with system in your garage like a heat pump so let's say in your garage it's conditioning the air right and your garage isn't very well insulated there's usually no insulation in the attic portion of the garage and and not much insulation on the actual full size of that garage door and if it's a two-car garage three-car garage or larger that's a lot of heat loss right and uh it's very drafty around it doesn't matter how well you try and seal those garage doors you're still going to get some sort of draft from the outdoors so when you're heating that air the air is what's warm but all the objects in there are cold so if you open the garage door for a period of time to maybe doing some welding or something or painting and you need some ventilation you open up the doors you let that cold air in you're letting the warm air out well you're going to use extra heating costs in order to recondition that cold air that's coming in right um so you're going to have longer and longer burns, more fuel consumption, uh, and longer runtime on your unit heaters that are just blowing warm air throughout the, the building. And then when you close those garage doors again, you have to wait for that cold air to be reconditioned so the heater will continue to run it until that, that space is, uh, air is warm again. And they all run off the thermostat, right? So, um, opposed to a tube heater, radiant tube heater, where it's actually radiant heat, where you're not just heating the air, you're actually heating the objects in that space, right? So the concrete pad, very important. You get radiant heat and you heat that pad up. It's even when the furnace or the unit heater or tube heater, sorry, the radiant tube heater shuts off, the floor is warm to the touch it's not cold right and it radiates the heat to the rest of the shop and your the vehicles that are parked in there and the tools and the tables and every object that's in that space is warm to the touch so if you open up the garage door and you close it again all the objects in the room continue to supply heat to the to that space not just the radiant tube heater so it heats up faster and it's more efficient not only that in the winter months when you pull a vehicle inside of a garage or a shop you're going to have a significant amount of snow and ice build up on the vehicle from driving it around in the winter months. Well, when you pull into a heated shop, that's going to melt onto the onto the floor and create pools of water. Um, and we want to eliminate that and keep the humidity level down so that we don't get any mold growth or anything like that inside there. And that it's a comfortable working environment as well if you're going to be doing some work in there. So... The tube heater with having the cement pad warm, it's going to evaporate that that thawed ice a lot faster. So the pools of water will dissipate and disappear um, much faster than in a forced air environment, uh, which can cause, if anybody has a, a small electric heater, they try to use electric heat in their shops or garages, you'll notice in the winter time, all that water that thaws off of your vehicle will run down towards the door and sometimes freeze your garage door shut right it'll because it's sub-zero minus 20 degrees out there and at the outside of that door it's not very well insulated and if you get a bead of water that flows towards the door because they all slope downhill that's part of the building code here in ontario in canada um that it must slope out of the building the moisture it's going to cool by the garage door and it's going to freeze there Whereas if you were using a radiant heater in that slab, cement slab was already up to temperature, you won't get that freezing at that door. The water will actually go right underneath the door to the outside and what's inside will evaporate. So you don't get that um, freezing effect and potentially freezing your garage door shut in the winter time. So that's the, it's also cheaper to run because it runs less, right? So 
Um, they are about the same cost, I guess, to put in uh, for installation. So they they might vary by about three to five hundred dollars difference. That's it. Um, but they all vent this. They'll vent the same way. Um, but they will heat a lot better. One thing you do want to keep in mind, though, is if you're going to use a radiant type heater, radiant tube heater, there are certain clearance requirements. So you would want to make sure that your ceiling height in your garage is high enough to support it because it has to be so many inches in, from the ceiling and it has to be a minimum of seven feet. I believe it's seven feet. I'd have to double check the code on that. Uh, but uh, seven feet from the ground as well. So usually 11 feet is your is your prime. Cause like if you got a vehicle parked in there, you don't want all that heat too close to the vehicle, right? Because it will damage the paint on the vehicles uh, if you're within like three feet of the vehicle with your tube heater. So uh, keep that in mind too. But generally most garages and shops can accommodate a radiant tube heater, no problem at all. You'll use a lot less BT. You need a much smaller heater, a smaller BTU heater. It'll do a much more efficient job. Uh, but that's my recommendation. So hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, click like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends and we'll be back with some more grid tips. So hope that helps. Bye for now.